So in this video, I want to talk to you about how I memorize code and code syntax using a program called Anki. Anki is a program that is a flashcard manager and it kind of has this inbuilt algorithm for spaced repetition. So it shows you information at certain intervals as you, your memory of it gets stronger and stronger. And there's plenty of videos and material to read out there about what Anki does and how powerful it is. And I'm a big fan myself. But now I just want to focus on how I learn code with it. You might be thinking, why bother memorizing code when you can look it up? And I think you can use the same, the, the same parallel can be used with learning any language, you know, Spanish, French, English. Yes, you can look it up in a dictionary or look some stuff on, up online, but it, it ruins your fluency. It breaks up your conversation, your flow, and makes it a very stop-starty and frustrating experience. Whereas if you're fluent and have, you have these kind of basic fundamentals memorized, it becomes fluent, it becomes really easy. And you know, when you're focusing on code specifically, you don't want to be sp breaking up your focus, looking up how to sort a column in ascending order. You want to be using your focus to solve the complex problem at hand. You want to be able to write fluently and free up your mental capacity to focus on those problems. First part is the setup. The first thing you'll want to do is install Anki and now I recommend installing it on your desktop whether that's Windows or Mac you can install on both via the AnkiWeb.net uh, website. You can also have this application installed on your iPhone or an Android phone um, but in terms of this setup step I recommend doing it on the desktop because there's much more functionality for editing and creating. But once you're there, reviewing on your phone is, is amazing. So I recommend getting both. The second part of the setup, once you've installed Anki, you will open it up and it will look broadly like this, although with less decks. And I wanna talk through this programming deck that I've created. Now, the fundamental part to learning code really, really effectively is setting up the structure of your card. And there's kind of two key things to this. What you'll see is when I'm looking at adding cards here, it's set up so that I've got a question, a type hint, and an answer. And the way you kind of set those things up, they're fields. So you can click this customize field thing, rename them, add more fields, reorder them, and so on. So you could create the same structure I've got here. Once you've done that, you then want to edit the card setup. And now this does look overwhelming for some people. I can, you can easily copy and paste that in, into your own template so you don't have to think about it. But I'll qu quickly talk through what it's doing. You've got three boxes here. And it's basically a series of HTML and CSS to style and structure your cards. And you've got one for the front card. And it gives you a little preview of what that might look like. One middle one is for the styling, the CSS, which basically like edits the colors and the visual layout of it. So it's not wholly important. And the back template, which um, shows you when you've answered the card, what gets revealed. Now the crucial thing that you need to do for these programming cards is have this front template set up. And what it's doing is saying, show me the question, have a bit of space, you bring in this type hint, which is this blue text, and I'll come onto that a bit later on when we're reviewing or inputting our cards. And thirdly, have the answer field as a type field. Now what this is doing is saying, is forcing the user when you're reviewing your cards to type out your answer. And why do I do that? Because I think it, it replicates reality, right? When you're going to be coding, you're gonna be typing what you need to remember. And so by getting as close as reality as you can, I feel like it's gonna create a greater link in your memory. And it's also gonna have like, you know, muscle, natural muscle memory by typing it out every time you're reviewing it. And that's the crucial thing. So I'll share that and make sure people can easily copy and code, copy and paste that. Um, but now you're set up. So it comes on to step two, which is capturing. Now what I really love about Anki is how easy it is to capture. Because if it was really 
hard, cumbersome, long drawn out process to capture information, you're not going to do it because it's a lot of effort. So what I'm going to do is just pull up an example um, bit of code. Uh, it's code from when I was playing around with the advent of code, where it's just like these programming challenges. Let's say I'm reviewing it and I'm trying to remember what I was doing. And I'm, I'm reading through it and I see len test list. I'm like, I can't remember what len does. So as any programmer would do, you'd look up the documentation for len function, which I've already pulled up here. And it says, oh, len returns the length or the number of items of an object. Ah, okay, I remember. And so what I'll typically do at this point is think, okay, let me add a card about that so I can remember that for the future. And I'll structure it in a way that it's practical um, code. It's not like literally the function and the definition, but it's more like, how would you do this using Python? And so one perfect example of what that code was doing is checking the length of a specific list object. So I'll say, how would you get the list, uh, the length of a list in Python, question mark. Now this is what the type in field is. Uh, I'll come on to that in a second actually. The answer is going to be len my list, whereas where my list is the length object. Now in the future, I'm gonna forget that I've called it my list. And so the type hint there is to help me not have to remember what these variables are I'm using in the answers. And so I'll say my list. So then I know when I'm reviewing that card in the future, it's like, oh, it's length of my list. So I've added that, the information's captured and I can review that later on in the evenings, any downtime I'm using Anki to review my cards, it'll come up then. Fantastic, super, super simple. Now, part three is about reviewing your cards. So it's really, really easy. But while we're here, I'll press study now and you'll see a couple of cards. I was learning really basic C sharp last week. So it's how do you print hello world in C sharp? And so I'll type it, I'll say, I think it's console.write line hello world now the really cool thing about this typing structure is it like has this this green for where you've got it right and the red for where you've got it wrong and you'll see here i've put a lowercase c instead of an uppercase which i believe will matter in c sharp and so what i'm going to do is just say do this again okay in c sharp how do you capture user input in the console Again, yeah, now I'm going to learn from my mistake because it's console with a capital C. Dot read line, I think it's that. Fantastic, I got it right. So I'll say good. Now here's an example using the type hints. So in Python, how do you sort a pandas data frame by a column? You can see here that common shorthand data frame I refer to as df and col as the column. And so that helps me remember that when I'm writing this answer, I need to use those. So I'll say df.sort values by equals, uh, I think it's in square brackets, but I can't fully remember. Let's try that. Perfect. I got it right. I'll hit good. And let's say I'm finished for the day. I'll close that down. It was syncing, it's all good. I didn't mean to close the application there, but really really simple way of capturing processing and reviewing they're all really simple and this has helped me learn programming much much more effectively this is something I've been doing for the last uh, couple of months in a new role as a data scientist and I found it really really helpful to kind of grasp the fundamentals and focus on m new, more complex things. And I can write more fluently. And I really recommend it for anyone out there learning coding and programming as a way to not have to think about looking up and just focus on the concepts, the theory, the structure, rather than how do I do X, Y, Z. 
If you found this video helpful in any way, I really hope you can give it a like and maybe subscribe to my channel where I talk about all things data, tech and productivity.